I'm back with more backyard science. There are so many simple, easy scientific techniques you can do to study the biodiversity in your backyard. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a technique I've done 220 times this summer for my own research. So far with our backyard science, we've surveyed the ground-dwelling arthropods and the birds, but the defining characteristic of any ecosystem is the vegetation or plant life. To systematically study the plant life in a given area, you can use a series of vegetation quadrats, or areas within which you count all of the plant life. I'm going to be using this square made out of PVC pipe, but you could also easily use a hula hoop or a circle of rope. First, you'll need to choose a spot to place your vegetation quadrat. I like to do this randomly. Of course, if you're trying to do a scientific study over multiple years, you might want to mark the places you put your quadrats so that you can go back to the same place every year. Alrighty, here we are. Welcome to my vegetation quadrat. Um, I'm gonna get all of these things that aren't actually attached out of the way so that we can see it a little better. Just dead leaves and stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sort of use my finger to go along the edge of the quadrat, and you can do the same thing with a hula hoop or whatever, and just sort of figure out what's actually rooted in versus outside of the quadrat space, because we don't want to count things that aren't actually growing in here. Okay, that's pretty good. There are several different ways that you could go about doing a vegetation quadrat study depending on what kind of information you care about. The simplest thing for us to do here would just be to count the species that are growing inside the square. Um, so obviously we've got lots of lawn grass, uh, we've got some leaves of violets of varying sizes in here, there's some dandelion leaves, and then there's all of this stuff which has a square stem which means it's part of the mint family. And I know that this is ground ivy, I guess. <laughs> if you're ever not sure about plants, you can take a photo of what you're looking at and upload it to a, a nature identification app like iNaturalist, and you should be able to get a pretty good ID off of there. So again, the simplest thing to do here in this study would just be to count the species. So we've got the grass is one, oh, there's a little, tree seedling in here. So grass one, tree seedling two, violets three, ground ivy four, dandelion five, and I think that's everything that's growing in here. Okay, so five species. And then we could go on to a different quadrat in my yard or a quadrat in someone else's yard and count the species again and see if they were more or fewer or the same number. But in my research, I'm interested not only in the number of species and which species they are, but also in their amount of cover. So there are two different ways that you could quantify or count cover. You could either do it by the top or like how much of the area the vegetation takes up or you could do it by the root area or what we would call the basal area which is just the sort of the base growing area of the plant so for instance this dandelion uh, the leaves spread out so the leaves are taking up quite a bit of vegetation area but the base is only this little bit down here um, so you can see how the difference between a base or basal area measurement and a vegetation cover measurement would change how we look at things. I've been doing basal area or root area measurement for my studies and then I sort of assign things to percentage categories based on how much cover I think they're taking up. So there's one, two, three dandelion clumps in here, um, but their basal area isn't very large. So I would say that dandelions total for this quadrat take up um, in the one to five percent category. And then we could do something similar for violets. So there's some violet here, and there's some violet here. Uh, but yeah, so again, not that many violets, so I would probably put their cover in the one to five percent category as well. And so we could continue to sort of estimate that for all the plants in here. Obviously the ground ivy is gonna take up a bit more. And then there's a ton of grass, um, but there's also a little bit of bare ground here and there's also all of this dead stuff so we would call that thatch 
Um, and thatch and bare ground are also important to count or quantify depending on what exactly you're using your vegetation quadrat study for. In my case, for my research this summer, I'm interested in pollinators. And there are a lot of native pollinators that actually make their nests in the ground or in the stems of dead plants. So in this case, knowing how much bare ground there is available for them to dig their nests or how much standing thatch, obviously this is not big enough for them to make their nests in, but how much bigger standing thatch there is available for them to lay their eggs in is really important. So yeah, that's basically uh, how you do a vegetation quadrat. You put the thing down on the ground and you count and identify what's inside. There sure are a lot of different kinds of plants growing in my backyard, aren't there? To take this study a step further, you could do a series of vegetation quadrats in your own yard and then compare them against a series of vegetation quadrats in the backyards of your neighbors and friends. How does the biodiversity differ between the yards? So how many species of plants did you find growing in your backyard vegetation quadrats? What other kinds of backyard science would you like to see me do in this series? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Then go check out my Patreon page. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you see the world as a series of five foot quadrats and you love tabletop role playing games, you'll definitely want to check out my project called Nature Check on Twitch, YouTube, and all podcast platforms. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.